Local government in medieval fantasy and especially in TTRPGs is a mostly overlooked thing in world building. It's mostly shrugged off with a local lord who is magically running things. Or here and there is a mayor who may be elected or not. Nobody knows exactly how he got to his position and he runs things on his own while having the town guard at his command. Considering that especially in TTRPGs you have a surprisingly high amount of content with local government bodies as an adventurer, you can easily make your world be a bit more lively by getting the kings of local rulership just right. Hello, I'm the world building sage and in this video I'll show you ways how to make local governments work in your setting. I'll start by showing you historical examples. In medieval Europe, especially within the Holy Roman Empire, before posing a few questions out of the things we've learned to help you on your world building journey. And at the end of the video, we'll create a local government together. In our most favorite medieval abomination, the Holy Roman Empire, local rulership is as complicated and diverse as you can get. And the scopes I'm talking about is mostly on village, barony or county level at the furthest. Basically rulership within a region you could traverse in one or two days of traveling at best. We'll take a closer look on three different kind of local governance in the Holy Roman Empire. But uh, there were more, of course. And each of those three had their local variants and they differed from time to time. But medieval fantasy is mostly modeled after Renaissance Europe with some late medieval sprinkles. So I'll take my examples from these. A bailiff, or in Latin, advocatus, was the steward of the land owning nobleman. In the name of the lord, bailiffs administered the parts of their realm they couldn't get to or didn't bother to rule over. This relationship works differently from a thief, as a bailiff was much closer to a modern bureaucrat than a lord in his own right. If you want to know how the world built, the different relationships between lords and their subjects, in Feudalism, watch my video on feudalism and world building, a link in the description. Anyways. Bailiffs enacted taxes and tariffs, they judged upon the law in the name of the lord and they mustered their levies during war times. Each of these bailiffs had variable sizes of land to rule over, sometimes there were entire systems of bailiffs. A Landvogt or Land Bailiff ruled over an entire county or even larger lands in the name of the Lord. There were city bailiffs that usually ruled over a city alone, mostly for a clerical lord. And then there were smaller bailiffs, split apart to oversee smaller regions, nothing more than a bunch of settlements. Bailiffs usually had a bittle at their disposal, which is basically a sheriff, who enforced their law. But both had to be careful about each other's boundaries, as overstepping the boundaries might bring the ire of Townships and cities had a strange relationship with their governance. There were cities that were ruled by a lord, usually a worldly one, as the cities who were ruled by a spiritual lord, for example Cologne, Mainz or Trier, usually had difficult relationships with their leaders and sometimes even ousted the clerical lord in favor of self-governance. While cities that were directly under the control of the Holy Roman Emperor were called imperial cities and had their own governance on their own from the get-go, since the Emperor was very far away anyway. Additionally, there were rural communes, which weren't exactly cities, but mostly larger swaths of land that somehow got a bunch of rights on their own without being lorded over by a lord or a bailiff and had a similar organization to a city or town. This happened a lot in Switzerland by the way. But this generally means that even small towns and villages with not many inhabitants can have a big amount of self-governance compared to other towns or cities. Towns were usually ruled by a town council if they weren't ruled by a bailiff or 
be lord directly. But the city council wasn't elected democratically normally. Town councils were usually compromised out of the wealthiest members of the city or town. Rich families that called themselves patricians. They either voted their peers on the council or simply inherited their position from their father. Actual democracy was very rare and usually just found in smaller communities. And democracy in this case means public assemblies of course. Lastly, monastic rulership. Usually, clerical rulers took bailiffs as their stewards to rule on earth, as bishops weren't allowed to rule by themselves officially. But monasteries had a different relationship with the Catholic Church, that would be too much for this video. But now that monasteries had their own kind of rulership over their own holdings, they of course employed bailiffs for things further away. But but many parts of the rulership they partook in themselves and were generally the most orderly and well written about it. Many peasants preferred to become servants of the monks because they were known to be the most lenient of overlords. In essence, considering what history has on offer, fantasy world building can have many and much more. In fantasy, cities can be more democratic or less democratic. Bailiffs can be replaced by elected local mayors who the lords have to accept. A monastery can be replaced by a wizard's tower and whatnot and whatnot. Just remember that local governorship can be more than a local lord or a town's mayor who simply is the local ruler without much of a thought. It's fantasy. There can be endless reasons on why things are different to the real world. You just have to explain why and how. Or it's exactly the same, which is already more spice than many fantasy settings have. Before we get to the questions, I'll ask you to leave a comment on how you are handling local governorship in your setting. And of course, if you are at it, maybe leave a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. To get the world building going, you should have a general idea in your head what form of government your society should have. My earlier examples are mostly about feudalism and medieval fantasy, for which I already have a video on my channel to explain in further detail. But the questions I'll ask are universal enough to apply to pretty much any form of government. So what is your local form of government? Who's ruling? Bailiff? Town council, monastery, or someone else entirely. Who are they answering to? A lord, a king, a president. Both influence each other in certain ways. Of course, a lord or bishop wants their holdings not to be meddled with by some town council who has their own interests. But what are the ways they enact their governorship? What are the ways they rule? They may have a steady town guard, a sheriff with a few deputies, or a local militia. How are things run? Are the agreements between the parties more verbal? Or is everything strictly bureaucratic to the last grain the bailiff taxes? What's the relationship between the subjects and the rulers? And what are other powerful forces within these relationships? The church, wizards, knights and other nobles could be an example. Uh, lastly, where does the governor and government reign? Architecture is a simple of power. Having town council houses is just as important as the bureau of a bailiff, a tower or castle he reigns in, or some other place of course. And the governor doesn't need to be set in the town or area directly either. Again, they can be ruled from afar. Our local government is part of the kingdom of Norigma's lost like I talked a bit more in my feudalism video. Go check it out. In Norigma, holdings are administered by a bunch of bureaucrats that resemble medieval bailiffs and stewards the closest, but they don't hold absolute power over the territories they govern. Every bailiff stands in opposition of a local elected council, a tradition which dates to older forms of government in the kingdom. The opposition council approves and censors the actions of the bailiff, stands in constant contact with them and thus symbolically with the king. In the past, these actions have been democratic. Every man and woman of age got a 
the vote in the assemblies. But nowadays, in most regions and even more so in larger towns and cities, the popular councils are put together by the richest and wealthiest of citizens. Sometimes the posts are even inherited de facto. Both parties control local government and must keep things running. Usually this happens on mutual negotiations on who may send a man to which post, but in many cases even those became more traditional. Town guards and sheriffs, for example, are assembled by the council or the popular assembly. They are enforcing the law, while the bailiffs are keeping jurisdiction and act as judges. But the bailiff is the one who must keep the town safe from magical beings and creatures. He pays monster hunters, he negotiates with druids and wizards, the bailiff leads rituals for the protection of the towns and cities, and he lead the negotiations together with the druids, with the magical protectors of the towns. In many cases especially the bailiffs under the direct command of the king, became very corrupt over the years, basically dancing after the rich citizens' noses while getting hefty donations from them. In some cases, they even actively sabotage government if they think it's time for a few more donations to fix things again. The king doesn't even know about this corruption, as the people who are there to report to the king are the ones participating in the corruption in the first place. Or maybe that's what the normal people who are outside of the loop think. Maybe the king just doesn't care, as long as the tax money keeps coming to the capital. At least the corruption money the bailiffs get seem to be invested in beautiful villas and castles. For themselves, of course. That's it for today's video, world builders. I hoped you liked it. If so, leave a like and subscribe, and maybe even leave a comment on your local governorship in your setting. See ya.